Welcome to Press Play. My name is Exonovant. And I'm Dormouse03. And on today's show, we check in with good old Nathan Drake and his brother Sam in a trailer called Reunited. Not open yet. We're closed. Come on, man. All right, I'm coming. Coming. Asshole. <sighs> yeah, can I help you? Yeah, I'm uh, looking for my little brother. It's about your height, a little bit leaner. Definitely less gray in the temples. Sam? It's good to see you again, Nathan. God, Sam. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Take it easy, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> How? How? I thought you... I saw you get shot. Yes, you did. Right there. Huh? Jesus. <laughs> well, the doctors, they... I mean, doctors, they patched me up and they... tossed me right back into the cell. Yeah, but I, I made calls. I, I checked everywhere. I, everything I heard, everything I found, it, it all confirmed you were dead. Well, Nathan, we killed a guard, okay? So they wanted to see me rot in that cell for the rest of my life, and I nearly did. Jesus, Sam, I... Man, if I had known, I, I, I swear to you, I would have you come back. You would have back. come back. I know, Nathan. I know. What's important now, though, is that I'm out. <laughs> Hey, hey, you still with me? Yeah. Need some air. <laughs> You're not gonna pass out on me or nothing, I, are you? I just might. It's a lot to digest, you know? But how, how did you get out? When did you get out? How, how'd you even get here, find me? All right, right, right. Slow down. Hey? Have a seat. I want to hear about you. Huh? Me? Yeah. What's to tell? Well, call some of your old contacts. Tell me some pretty crazy ass stories. <sighs> Jeez, what crazy stories? Got shot, hanging from a derailed train in the Himalayas. Yeah, that, uh... That actually happened. Come on, man, what did I miss? Jeez, Sam, where do I start? Start with the best part. Uh, do you remember the theory that we had that Sir Francis Drake faked his own death? Yeah, sure. Okay. He did. I found the coffin. Off the coast of Panama? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, get this. Okay, I open it up, right? right? And there's no body. But the bottom is his old journal. Are you shitting me? I mean, what can I say? Another lost city destroyed? And, uh, we made it out alive. Barely. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I wish you could have been there. No, it, it's literally unbelievable. You, you tell me you stumble upon yet another archaeological <laughs> gold mine, and somehow you manage to walk away with nothing. Yeah, well, it's a story of my life, I guess. But, you know, I managed to grab a few trinkets here and there. Mm. Paid off the car, the house, engagement ring, the... Engagement ring? I'm married. I can't believe... I, Elena, from the stories, that's my wife. You gotta come meet her. Tonight, dinner, at my place. You're coming to dinner. I can tell her all about you. <laughs> Shit, I gotta tell her all about you. Nathan, I'm in a lot of trouble here. Alright. <laughs> oh boy. Oh no. Okay. First first thing, I did not like the dialogue options. I didn't like the dialogue option either. It it just it slows down the pacing. It uh -huh. just I don't like it. It felt unnecessary. 
Because, I mean, all, all you're going to do when you replay is you'll have the option of selecting the other two, and he's probably going to say, oh, yeah, I was hanging off a train, and then it's going to do the crossfade, and it's going to come back. and Yeah. It, it really just serves no purpose. No. It's like, pick your favorite Uncharted. <laughs> Basically, that's what that was. It was like, let's start with the best one. Well, <laughs> I mean... Yeah. Oh. It just felt it felt unnecessary, and it felt like it slowed down the pace of the narrative. I, I guess, like, and, and, you know, coming from the old school days, right? Like, I remember when I w- when I would play a game, and because it wasn't as integrated as it is today with like a Mass Effect, where you you're it's not like you go to. It feels more seamless when you go into those dialogue prompts. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, it was all about playing for like an hour and then seeing like a five minute cut scene where you could just sit back and watch. And then you play for another hour and you, that was the formula. And what I'm seeing like with this game is that they're trying to give you that cinematic feel, yet they're going to chop it up. I don't want it to be chopped yeah. up. And give you give you control over a bit of it to make it feel like you're still playing while the cutscene is happening, which... For this type of game, to me, doesn't make sense. <laughs> the game has enough action in it anyway to where I want to I want to breathe a little bit. I want to go in there and run and gun and blow stuff up and do whatever. But when it gets to the cinematic portion of it and they're trying to convey a feeling, which I did get some feeling from that. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, some of the looks and the voice, it was awesome. Yep. But then they just... That one point, that one point is the most memorable moment I have of that four and a half minutes we just watched, and it wasn't a good memory. No, it was not a good. It was like a what? And now what is this? Why? Why am I choosing something that he says? Because having dialogue options makes sense in a game where you are playing a character and have control over how who that character is and how they feel and how they speak to people like when it's a mass effect or you know a dragon age where, or a fallout even like where you are shaping that character and that narrative and it will change based on how you interact with it but this is not that this is a story <laughs> that you are that is written, that is being told, and you are, you know, playing the gameplay sections of it. There's no reason for you to have control over what Nathan says, because ultimately you're not going to, at least I hope, affect who he is. You, you know where they're going with this. It's going it's to come... I mean, I can almost predict it. I don't know if I'm 100%, but I mean... Why introduce these type of options if at the end of the game you don't get to make a choice? Right, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. If they do that, like if it comes down to one of those stupid endings where it's like, you know, everybody's kind of on the cliffhanger and you have to choose mm-hmm. who's going to live your brother or, choose or die. <laughs> and it's based on, you know, hitting triangle or square and you have to play the game through four times to see how... I swear to God, that will kill this game for me, man. And I, I mean, it's Naughty Dog. Maybe they pull out some magical miracle from nowhere, and it's the best thing ever. But I can't see it. I mean, you and I both—we're coming through Fallout right now, right? We're both playing yeah. Fallout. Yeah. And imagine if the other Fallout games would have, like, you know, you know, they did the old Fallout games. They had dialogue trees and stuff. Imagine mm-hmm. if Fallout Four had no dialogue trees. Right. How jarring that would be to the community Mm -hmm. not to say that they couldn't pull it off but geez man that's a tough pill to swallow right it just feels weird that that particular scene it felt unnecessary but i'm with you like they wouldn't have added it in just to be a gimmicky thing like that where oh you get to pick a couple of things and if they did then that's terrible too because it's an it's a waste of development resources in my opinion if it's not gonna if if it's not any more than what we saw yeah but, I mean, th- this is not a franchise that's ever had dialogue trees, so why why introduce them? There's no, there's no need unless they're going for the, you know, Uncharted 4. This is going to be the last time we see Nate and the gang, and you as the player are going to get to choose 
like how, how it all ends. How the story unfolds. Yeah. I don't want to choose. Mm-hmm. I haven't made any choices for Nathan since the whole franchise started. <laughs> right. Other than to, to live or die. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to make any now. And uh, honestly, to me, multiple endings on games, unless they're done right, kind of kills it. Like, if the endings are completely unique and it's it doesn't kind of tell the same story just with a different person winning or losing type thing, mm-hmm. it, it almost is worse for me. Like, if it is one of those cliffhanger type endings where I have to choose A, B, C, or D, uh, then knowing that I can just go back and play the other three, I, I care less about the one that I pick off the bat, if that makes right. any sense. Like, yeah, the very it, first time it I play. It all of them. Yeah, because I'm going to be like, well, I'm just going to, you know, I guess I'll just choose triangle because it's the top button on my controller. And then I'll just play tomorrow and hit O and see what happens there. And everybody wins and loses because I can see all the endings. That's not the ending I want to see. I want there to be a definitive ending. And I, as a player, have to respect it for what it is. And I'm not going to, if they do that, which is not confirmed, but I mean, I don't see why they wouldn't do it. I don't want that. I don't, I don't, I want to be told the story. I don't, yes. I don't, I don't want to be the author of this thing. And that's what they're trying to put me in right now is they want mm-hmm. me to write the story. I don't want to write it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you know to write I mean? it. I want you to write it. You write it just fine. Cause like you said, let's talk, let's maybe talk for, for a second about everything else. <laughs> right. <laughs> in, in what we just saw. Like, I think it was a nice introduction cause it looks like, you know, Nate is, is working at kind of a, you know, regular, normal job. Regular job, yeah. And it explains what happened to his brother and why we haven't heard about him. It explains kind of where Nate is in his life. You know, he's married. He's running the regular thing. You know, he's got a house and a car. And and then it ended with the I'm in trouble from his brother, which I think we all predicted that his yeah. brother was going to be in trouble and he was going to have to get back into the game to save him or to help him. But if you also notice when they were sitting on the, the bench there, he said, hey, man, I'm married. And then he goes, you ought to come over for, for dinner. And he goes, wait, I got to tell I got to tell my wife about you. Right. Yeah, I did notice that. So she, <laughs> she doesn't, doesn't even, know. She doesn't even know, which kind of when you when you think about what we saw in the last reveal where he walks in that hotel room and she's standing there. I wonder if at that point she knows or if he just doesn't tell her at all. Right. He just goes off with his brother. Because if she, if he doesn't tell her, not that it's a lie because if it never came up in conversation or whatever, but it's kind of like two lies at that point. Cause if he didn't tell her and then she finding out and then, He's not where he's supposed to be. He's in some other country. Then it's right. kind of like this double backstab. Yeah, this is definitely the the beginning of the game. Like, yes, I mean this I is think so. this is obviously the opening cutscene, more or less, is what I'm thinking. I think so. It seems that way. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't see there being another cutscene prior to this. Unless it starts you off in like an action sequence that takes place a little ways into the game and then flashes back. Yeah, could do flashbacks. Yeah, they could do flashbacks. Because it seems like the these games want to get you into the action pretty quickly. Yeah, and and they did flashbacks in in Two. previous Uncharted games. Yeah, so they yeah they're not they could do that. Yeah, you're right. They could they might just you know what the beginning could be him laying in that pool of water going into the jungle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That could actually be the beginning of the game. Play through that opening sequence and then flashback to this very well could be something like that i mean that that kind of narrative structure would be fine i think yeah i'm interested to see what everybody says in the comments because i mean the video's got seventeen thousand views and there's only 13 dislikes Mm -hmm. or 15 15. yeah 15 dislikes I'm, i'm reading through the comments now just to see nobody's talking about the dialogue thing i don't see anything about the dialogue either Wait, this guy says when Sam asked Nate to start with the best part, I think that Naughty Dog's asking you which game you like the most. That's what you said with mm-hmm. the dialogue tree. Yeah. It's basically just asking you which game you like <laughs> the most. Which game do you like? 
But that's yeah. so, it's so not needed. It feels, I, it just felt weird. And they lingered on it for a second. You know, and it just was like it broke up the momentum of that scene. It it, it broke it. It you're right. It, that's that's exactly what I felt. I mean, you're getting into the emotion and and the characters, and all of a sudden you see text on the screen with buttons, and it throws it off for me, man. Especially when none of the other three games had it. And especially as I, again, like for this one, it was just very. It was an unnecessary dialogue choice, really. Yeah. The other question is going to be how often are those little things going to pop up? If they pop up in every cutscene, mm-hmm. I mean, it's going to be annoying. If it's just maybe, not that I'm giving it a pass, but you know, if it's every once in a blue moon type thing. But even so, I mean, they're definitely going to. It's definitely going to be one of those endings, man, where I got to choose. Yeah. I swear to God, that's going to kill it for me. Yeah. Because I won't. I won't feel. I'll just be like, well, who cares? I'll just. Close my eyes and pick one. I can just play back through and see them all. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's worrying. It's definitely worrying. Because everything else, like if it hadn't had that, I'd have been like, mm, this looks awesome. <laughs> you know. And it's crazy because that one th- seven seconds or however long it took them to make the choice, it's almost like it tanked the whole four and a half minutes. Mm-hmm. Because I was getting into it, man. There was a lot of moments in there where they did a really good job with the facial animations and really, yep. I mean, the dialogue was on point. It mm-hmm. felt like it wasn't just like, oh, it's my brother, <laughs> you know. Right. It really, yeah. really felt like he was stunned and, you know, it did it. I mean, perfectly. And it, which I think is hard to do in four and a half minutes to be right. reunited with somebody and get it right. Mm-hmm. And then you just blow it with a dialogue thing. I don't understand it. Yeah. No, the the only reason that I can think that they would do it is what you said, that it's going to be a choice-based thing at a couple of major points in the game, including the ending. Yeah. And, and, and let's go ahead and put this out there, too, a little, disclaim, little uh, disclaimer. We haven't seen or read anything else about this dialogue sequence. No. We, we might be wrong. I mean, we there's an article that I just linked you two just a second ago and i know there's another video up where i think they go back behind the scenes with the developers and they talk about it so maybe what we're saying is completely <laughs> you know maybe maybe there's just like two dialogue sequences i, I don't know maybe it's not as big as what we're making why would out they to be. have it in there at all though know, if it's only going to be a couple of little minor things that just feels gimmicky and stupid i know man i'm just like whichever way you play it it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be good. <laughs> like I said, we haven't we haven't we haven't researched this dialogue thing, so go easy on us. But at the same time, just knowing what I just seeing what I just saw, it doesn't matter how much you know behind the scenes I watch. It still affected me. Yes. It still pulled me out of the moment, no matter mm-hmm. what the you know the reason and why they say they're doing it. It still impacted me when it got. And you know what was crazy is that I was anticipating it. The whole Mm -hmm. time. I was like, at Mm -hmm. which point are they going to do, are they going to cut the dialogue? And you're going to be doing that the whole game. That's what I'm saying. You're going to be sitting there worried going, when am I going to have to make a choice? And imagine like, because in some games, um, so like The Witcher has dialogue choices, which were fine because that makes sense for that game. But The Witcher has some of them that are timed. So like you only have a few seconds to make, to pick your choice, you know? So imagine like... You're sitting there on edge watching the cutscene. You're supposed to be enjoying the cutscene, but you're sitting there worried that there's going to be like a timed dialogue choice. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. I just see. don't think that that I like that for this game. I don't know. When, when I'm watching like a cutscene, I just want to watch it. I do not want to touch my control. I almost want to just sit back and eat some popcorn and just maybe take a drink of water and enjoy it. Because I know for the next 20 minutes, I'll be blowing stuff up and going crazy, right? I just want to enjoy it. I don't want to be on edge the whole time. Now, you take a game like Beyond Two Souls or Heavy Rain. Well, I, I didn't mind the cinematic slash button prompts, sequences, dialogue stuff because that's the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I, I expect that. But <laughs> why do this for the fourth game? It makes no sense. I don't know. It makes no sense. <laughs> I don't like it. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I know I know that you just got your PS4. I know you're going to be playing some Uncharted before this oh, yeah. drops. Oh, yeah. So yes. maybe, guys, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will, uh, you've heard our initial thoughts about what we just saw. Everything was perfect except for that dialogue <laughs> stuff. We we do reserve the right to change our mind, but I, I'll be honest with you. I'm 99% sure I ain't changing my mind. Like. <laughs> yeah, I. I I'm I'm, like I'm, I'm pretty darn sure I won't change my mind on this one. But maybe we'll do another video in the future once we do some more research and maybe you know you've played your games and you know done because I know you've seen the gameplay before but you never yeah. like played it. So maybe we'll come back before the game drops and talk about it again. And once we hear you guys' feedback, you know maybe we'll come around to it. But I don't know. I don't think I am. <laughs> Just sad. I don't I don't know why they would do it. I just don't know why. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't it doesn't doesn't make any sense, man. So you guys can let us know what you think about it in the comments, but as of right now, I'm digging everything about this game but that. So we'll see you guys on the next episode of Press Play.